<sighs> hey y'all, I just had a tennis tournament this weekend. Uh, <laughs> so if you know me, you know that I hate losing. <sighs> and it's a very humbling experience to lose. And I hate, I hate a second place trophy. What is that? All right, well, I'm going to be back. I'm going to take a shower. Five hours later. So this is a mic check. A mic check. Okay, so yeah, that shower turned into a nap and lunch, some emails. But yeah, we're here. I fluffed up my hair a little bit. And now let's go. So I want to start off by telling you a little bit about my journey in tennis. So I started pretty late. I was a full grown adult. I didn't start playing tennis until 2009 and by 2013 I was ranked in the state that I was playing in in my division. I was number one in the state and number nine in the southeast which is nine states and because of that I got recognition by the league U.S. Tennis Association and they had me come and speak at an event and I did a couple of things with them and then Recently, about a couple of weeks ago, I was featured an amateur recreational player like me, one of the famous brands websites um, on their Instagram page. And it was pretty cool. I've screenshot it so that I can brag about it, you know, just another day. Now there's a story behind why I fell in love with tennis in the first place. One being that I was actually, it was when I was working for CNN and I was at the London Bureau and I was there to cover Wimbledon. And it wasn't until there, that beautiful, green, lawn, famous tennis tournament that I started to see really old players kind of marching with their tennis bags to the courts before the main matches. And I was told those were the seniors in the senior league. And what I realized, light bulb moment, was that tennis is a sport that you're in control of. And that means that you don't need a team. So I grew up loving basketball. I was obsessed. And now that obsession has taken the form on a new sport, which is tennis. And if you know me, then you know I love tennis. But that light bulb moment was that I didn't need a team to play and you can play as long as you want. In fact, when I lived in Charlotte, I played, the oldest player that I played was an 89 year old. And there was this park I played at on Saturday. Senior home would drop off a load of tennis players. So there were people in their 70s and their 80s and then 89 year old that would play tennis. The other thing with tennis, you don't even have to have legs sometimes. They have wheelchair tennis. So I love the power in that. But what I'm here to tell you about today is the character that this sport forces you to build. It tests your integrity. Do you call the balls on the line out? Are you fair with your points? You have to be so gracious when you lose. And not only for adults, but this is a magnificent sport for children as well. Now this video isn't meant to tell you or promote for you to go out and play tennis. I'm here just to tell you a lesson that I learned today. So back to being gracious, this sport forces you to shake the hand of the opponent, whether you win or lose and you must do it with dignity and graciousness. Now I've definitely experienced where people will just like slap your hand over the net and there are very poor losers. Well, I mean, it's just competition and I love playing aggressive players because that's me. I'm aggressive. I love winning. I usually win except for today and I'm okay with it now. So guys, I went from playing about 13 to 15 tournaments in a year as a full grown adult with a full time job. <laughs> but I went from playing all of those tournaments to having not played in a tournament and I counted in five years. I can't even believe it. But base level, I'm pleased that I was able to get my money's worth from it because I played in all the matches that were offered for the level that we signed up for. Now back to the competition. On a day-to-day -day basis, just playing a match, whether a friendly match or in a rec league, there's a bit of competition. People want to win. Your goal is to make sure that the other person 
as many chances as you can, does not get an opportunity to return the ball back to you. But you up the ante when you enter a tournament and you always expect that everybody who enters the tournament, they are there to win. So the competition is elevated. So this weekend, I had the first game on Friday and we won, we weren't playing our best, but we won the game because we were better. But that doesn't always mean in tennis that you'll win because that is also the challenge in tennis when you play down or if you play people who are as skilled as you you have a chance to lose because you might end up playing on their level hold that thought so then saturday moved on to the semifinals, and that was an easier match than the first one we were focused we were steady we were strong and in and out the score was six one six two yeah i know yeah. So we go in today, my doubles partner, he sized up the competition. He actually told me, he asked the people that played them the day before how they were. So we were all ready. They were across the board weaker players than us. In fact, the woman on the other team never even moved to get the ball. So all I had to do was bypass her. We played their game. So let me tell you how the match went. First set went as we expected, 6-4 us. And so at 6-5, it was my partner's serve, and I hate to say it, and I hope he's not watching, but he choked because he is probably the strongest player of the entire group. And if he would have just killed it with his serves, the game would have been over. But I can't let him take all the blame. We are a team, and I certainly could have carried my weight much better as well. Okay, so we're 6 all, and we have to play a tie break. So they won the second set. And that's how my face was when I was like, so we're just going to play a third set on this pre-Memorial Day weekend, are we? There should have been no problem, easy breezy, and I knew they were going to come for us. But next thing you know, guys, we lost the third set 6-1. We only won a game, but I was proud because I was sucked it, sucked it up and sincerely looked in their eyes and said, good game. And so we sat on the bench after and my partner was like, that's humbling. <laughs> and I just started laughing. So when you're in a tournament, you get prizes and they had this beautiful plate that I had already envisioned that would be a part of my collection and I never guys if you followed me for a while liked a second place trophy you know I hate them okay, look at this little thing isn't it cute finally at least it doesn't say second place I do have a trophy that's a second place and I hate it and what I wanted to share with you and why I wanted to make this our chat this week is that through it all, do, through distraction, through obstacles, through nerves, through whatever challenges that may come your way, you still have to play your own game. No matter how difficult it is, you have to push through it. So I want to leave you with that message this week. Isn't it like so profound? I'm like so smart. All right, so I want to have fun with this. I want to read any comments that you'd like to put below about any challenges similar that you had to realize like if I just play my own game I can still win despite the obstacles despite the distractions despite the challenges let me know below comment share this with your friends and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already a lot of boob sweat going on here